The Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk is a retired American single-seat, subsonic twin-engine stealth attack aircraft developed by Lockheed's secretive Skunk Works Division and operated by the United States Air Force USAF. It was the first operational aircraft to be designed with stealth technology. Work on what would become the F-117 was commenced in the 1970s as a means of countering increasingly sophisticated Soviet surface-to-air missiles SAMs. During 1976, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency DARPA, issued Lockheed with a contract to produce the HAVE-Blue Technology Demonstrator, the test data from which validated the concept. On 1 November 1978, it was decided to proceed with the F-117 development program. A total of five prototypes would be produced, the first of which performed its maiden flight during 1981 at Groom Lake, Nevada. The first production F-117 was delivered in 1982, and its initial operating capability was achieved in October 1983. All aircraft were initially based at Tonopa Test Range Airport, Nevada. The aircraft's faceted shape made from two-dimensional flat surfaces heavily contributes to its relatively low radar cross-section of about 0.001 square meters. To minimize its infrared signature, it has a non-circular tailpipe that mixes hot exhaust with cool ambient air and lacks afterburners, it is also restricted to subsonic speeds as breaking the sound barrier would produce an obvious sonic boom that would increase both its acoustic and infrared footprints. While its performance in air combat maneuvering was less than that of most contemporary fighters, it was strictly an attack aircraft despite being commonly referred to as the stealth fighter. For this reason, it is equipped with integrated sophisticated digital navigation and attack systems, targeting being achieved via a thermal imaging infrared system and a laser rangefinder, laser designator. It is aerodynamically unstable in all three aircraft principal axes and thus requires constant flight corrections via a fly-by-wire FBW flight system to maintain controlled flight. Even years following its entry to service, the F-117 was a black project, its existence being denied by USAF officials. On 10 November 1988, the F-117 was publicly acknowledged for the first time. Its first combat mission was flown during the United States invasion of Panama in 1989. The last of 59 production F-117s were delivered on 3 July 1990. The F-117 was widely publicized for its role in the Gulf War of 1991, having flown approximately 1,300 sorties and scored direct hits on what the U.S. called 1,600 high-value targets in Iraq. F-117s also participated in the conflict in Yugoslavia, during which one was shot down by a surface-to-air missile, SAM, in 1999. It was also active during Operation Enduring Freedom in 2001 and Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003. The USAF retired the F-117 in 2008, primarily due to the fielding of the F-22 Raptor. Despite the type's official retirement, a portion of the fleet has been kept in airworthy condition, and F-117s have been observed flying since being retired from combat. In 1936, Robert Watson Watt, a British engineer who invented radar, noted that measures to reduce an object's radar cross-section RCS, could be used to evade radar detection. In 1962, Pyotr Ufimsev, a Soviet mathematician, published a seminal paper titled Method of Edge Waves in the Physical Theory of Diffraction in the Journal of the Moscow Institute for Radio Engineering, in which he showed that the strength of the radar return from an object is related to its edge configuration, not its size. Ufimsev was extending theoretical work published by the German physicist Arnold Sommerfeld. Ufimsev demonstrated that he could calculate the RCS across a wing's surface and along its edge. The obvious and logical conclusion was that even a large aircraft could reduce its radar signature by exploiting this principle. However, the resulting design would make the aircraft aerodynamically unstable, and the state of computer technology in the early 1960s could not provide the kinds of flight computers which would later allow aircraft such as the F-117 and B-2 Spirit to stay airborne. By the 1970s, when Lockheed analyst Dennis Overholzer found Ufimsev's paper, computers and software had advanced significantly, and the stage was set for the development of a stealth airplane. The F-117 was born after the Vietnam War, where increasingly sophisticated Soviet surface-to-air missiles SAMs, had downed heavy bombers. 
The heavy losses inflicted by Soviet-made SAMs upon the Israeli Air Force in the 1973 Yom Kippur War also contributed to a 1974 Defense Science Board assessment that in case of a conflict in Central Europe, air defenses would likely prevent NATO air strikes on targets in Eastern Europe. It was a black project, an ultra-secret program for much of its life very few people in the Pentagon knew the program even existed. The project began in 1975 with a model called the Hopeless Diamond, a wordplay on the Hope Diamond because of its appearance. The following year, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency DARPA, issued Lockheed Skunk Works a contract to build and test two stealth strike fighters, under the code name, Have Blue. These subscale aircraft incorporated jet engines of the Northrop T-38A, fly-by-wire systems of the F-16, landing gear of the A-10, and environmental systems of the C-130. By bringing together existing technology and components, Lockheed built two demonstrators under budget, at $35 million for both aircraft, and in record time. Under Secretary of Defense for Research and Engineering William J. Perry was instrumental in shepherding the project. The maiden flight of the demonstrators occurred on 1 December 1977. Although both aircraft crashed during the demonstration program, test data gathered proved positive. The success of Blue led the government to increase funding for stealth technology. Much of that increase was allocated towards the production of an operational stealth aircraft, the Lockheed F-117, under the program code name, Senior Trend. The operational aircraft was officially designated, F-117A. Most modern U.S. military aircraft use post-1962 designations in which the designation, F, is usually an air-to-air -air fighter, B, is usually a bomber, A, is usually a ground attack aircraft, examples include the F-15, the B-2 and the A-6. The F-117 is primarily an attack aircraft, so its, F, designation is inconsistent with the Department of Defense system. This is an inconsistency that has been repeatedly employed by the USAF with several of its attack aircraft since the late 1950s, including the Republic F-105 Thunderchief and General Dynamics F-111 Aardvark. A televised documentary quoted project manager Alan Brown as saying that Robert J. Dixon, a four-star USAF general who was the head of Tactical Air Command, felt that the top-notch USAF fighter pilots required to fly the new aircraft were more easily attracted to an aircraft with an F designation for fighter, as opposed to a bomber B or attack A designation. The designation, F-117, seems to indicate that it was given an official designation prior to the 1962 U.S. Tri-Service Aircraft Designation System and could be considered numerically to be a part of the earlier century series of fighters. The assumption prior to the revealing of the aircraft to the public was that it would likely receive the F-19 designation as that number had not been used. However, there were no other aircraft to receive a 100. Series number following the F-111. Soviet fighters obtained by the U.S. via various means under the Constant PEG program were given F-Series numbers for their evaluation by U.S. pilots, and with the advent of the Team Series fighters, most often Century Series designations. As with other exotic military aircraft types flying in the southern Nevada area, such as captured fighters, an arbitrary radio call of 117 was assigned. This same radio call had been used by the enigmatic 4477th Test and Evaluation Squadron, also known as the Red Hats, or Red Eagles, that often had flown expatriated MiG jet fighters in the area, but there was no relationship to the call in the formal F-19 designation then being considered by the USAF. Apparently, use of the 117 radio call became commonplace and when Lockheed released its first flight manual, the USAF-1 manual for the aircraft F-117A was the designation printed on the cover. Thank you very much for watching don't forget to support this channel by liking and commenting on your opinions here. See you in the next video.